All right. The 2015 FZ07. This is Yamaha's FZ07. They have the FZ07 and the FZ09. The FZ07 I find to be a bit better of a bike. Why? It's a bit more balanced for what it is, for the type of use you're going to be doing on the bike, the type of riding. And uh, the power is just about right for the chassis and for the suspension, where the FZ09, the power is a bit much for the suspension, especially the front. Uh, there are some fixes for that, but with the FZ07, it's really balanced about right. Uh, mentioned a couple of things about this bike. Uh, it's pretty quiet, so a lot of people change the exhausts out. Um, it's a very upright seating position and pretty comfortable. Uh, it is water-cooled. Uh, it doesn't have any of the real protection on the bike as far as uh, for wind or anything like that. There's no fairing. There's no windscreen. Uh, so it is a true naked bike. Plenty of power for two passengers and uh, certainly plenty for one. Getting on the bike first thing I will tell you is that the bars feel really narrow. Um, it's one of the hard things to kind of get used to on this bike for me, coming from other bikes. I feel like this should be about out to here if you can see my hands, which is like two inches. It's not really a four inch wider bar. Uh, so say two to four inches wider would make this bike a little bit, I think, nicer to ride. Um, and that's pretty pretty easy swap. Anyways, what else? Uh, it's relatively basic in the sense that it has a, its clutch is a cable clutch, easy to adjust. Brakes are all hydraulic, of course. They are on all bikes. You can get these with or without ABS. Uh, if you're a new rider, for sure you want ABS. It turns out that a lot of guys buy these bikes without ABS because they're going to use them for stunting. And it's such a confidence-inspiring bike. Uh, your feet, my feet are firmly planted on the ground. It's an easy bike to ride. Power delivery is really predictable. That people get more and more confident on this motorcycle. I would like to say that confidence is not a substitution for experience or skill. And therefore, you see a lot of these bikes get totaled. Uh, and you've got to watch out when you're buying one of these to make sure that it's not a bike that has been totaled and just rebuilt. You'll find that parts for these bikes are really cheap because people need to buy so many replacement parts because they do crash them a lot. And I'll tell you why here in a minute. The bike is really easy to maneuver and handle in the parking lot. U-turns, even slow, slow, slow U-turns like that. Super simple, super easy. Why do people crash these bikes all the time? It has a lot to do with the confidence inspiring, uh, the way, the kind of the mannerisms of this bike. People will buy this bike and decide they want to do lots of wheelies, stoppies, all sorts of stunts, and that confidence gets a little ahead of them. So um, it's not a bike that really scares you. And it's really easy to do wheelies and things. So we're really not headed out to do any of that kind of stuff. Just to give you a good idea of what this bike is about. Now without any wind protection, you're going to get a lot of noise and in your helmet. So wearing earplugs is a good idea. Or a really good quiet helmet. Um, you can get small windscreens for these. May help a little bit. But if you're using it for around town, you really don't need it. It's a fun, fun bike. It is one of my most highly recommended bikes for beginners and just people wanting a really fun bike. Power delivery is really good down low where you're going to use it around town. And it's got plenty of power for the highway. You're sitting really, really upright on this bike. so. Looking around and over cars for traffic is really good. So people are using them for commuter bikes. Pretty good bike for that. And as I was saying, I like it better than the SC09. And the explanation really for that has to do with the power 
for this style bike is just so dead on perfect on the FZ07. In the FZ09 there's just so much power that you really need a lot more suspension to go with it. And the only way to really change it, you can change out the springs on the FZ09, and you can change out the fork oil and that helps quite a bit. But that FZ09 has more of a super bike engine in it and you really need the performance suspension to go along with that. This bike, it just seems to be balanced perfectly. If I were to give you any negatives on this bike, the negatives I would say could still be some of the, you know, one of the positives about this bike. The upright seating position, which is really comfortable and easy to deal with around town. If you're on the freeway, you could feel like you're getting blown back just a little bit. And so you could just move the handlebars up a little bit. All you need to do is just lean, be lean forward just a tiny bit more and you get rid of that. So not that big a deal. And then of course the thing I mentioned about the handlebars, something you get used to riding this bike pretty easily, that is the handlebars being pretty narrow. It's, you know, a really, really simple fix just to buy a set of wider handlebars and swap over the controls over to the new handlebars that are a bit wider. And I think that would be a little nicer. I think they went with a narrower bar just so that a new rider doesn't overpower the steering of the bike. I didn't even put my feet down yet. There we go. And it's so well balanced that you could just sit there and balance this bike stopped at a stoplight like that. Pretty amazing. They're really well balanced. The engine's a pretty light engine being a 700. And I just love the power delivery of this thing. Just real torquey right off the line. With a little pipe on here you can get a good sound out of it. But it's kind of nice to have a quiet bike around town too. Another benefit of this bike is fuel economy, which is pretty high, and I don't know the exact fuel economy, but I've known people to say they can get 70 miles per gallon out of these bikes pretty easily, and that's fantastic. It has a little thing on the display to tell you when you're in economy right here, and it says ECO, economy. So at the RPM I'm at, it still says economy. I get on the gas, it goes away. gearbox is really smooth there's no clunkiness to it it's really well cut gears so the you know down shifting up shifting there's no clunkiness clunkiness at all some bikes you come up to a stop you put it in gear and you get this clunk there's none of that with this bike quality gear sets gears are spaced perfectly one of the reasons I like, there's nothing really to complain about on this bike at all. I mean, as far as it being such a a great all-around bike, it is one of my favorite bikes. It's a really high rec highly recommended bike. Now, the thing I will tell you about finding one of these bikes, is finding one in really good condition, is not easy. I struggle finding these bikes in good condition. It's a constant battle because so many people end up stunting these bikes and you got to be really careful i'll go through and i look at them and you're like okay that one looks like a good one and all of a sudden you start looking around and you're like, wait a minute i can tell they replaced the little plastics now all the plastics on this bike you could do a whole carbon fiber body swap on this thing for about 500 bucks it's really cheap just they sell so many of these body kits you can buy any color you want you could swap out the colors every weekend if you wanted to just because i think for about 150 bucks you could buy a different color body kit, which is pretty cool, but you also need to be aware that somebody may have changed that already because they crashed the bike. So you want to look at things like the bar ends, things that they won't replace. Um, you know, if they've swapped out the body panels, they've swapped out the bars, they've swapped out the bar ends, if they've, things like that, you start looking at it, you go, hey, they may have crashed the bike things that are a little bit harder to replace the side case on this
bike, because it's a carrier of some of the engine components, usually if they've crashed it, that's still going to be sitting there scratched. Is it's not just a real, I mean, it's a pretty easy swap, but it's like an hour or something like that, you know, so people may not do that where the other parts are just bolt on and there's not a lot of them so you want to look around just to see if there's any scrapes or bruises on the bike just to make sure it hasn't been crashed you know if it's been dropped that's probably not that big of a deal somebody drops it on the side but you know a big crash could bend something these engines seem to be pretty indestructible So checking the oil, making sure that they've had uh, putting proper oil in it, always, always important. I think if you're in the market for a used bike like this, consider that you may have to look at quite a few before you find the right one. You could always just go buy a brand new one um, from dealers. Dealers don't make a lot of money on these bikes. I think what they rely on more is they're relying on you financing that bike uh, using a moto lease which I highly recommend you stay away from um, and they can make a little money on financing and things like that and that's where kind of where they're gonna make the money I've seen a lot of dealers carrying these bikes and actually losing money on the motorcycle and just making a little bit on the financing so that you know they gain another customer uh, they're buying these bikes for, they're spending a lot of money on these bikes and really not selling them for a heck of a lot so if you can find a dealer that's got a good one and maybe a, a good relationship building thing to do to buy one from a dealer uh, or somebody that's got all the history and they seem to be a mature rider that's always a good thing uh, a neighbor of ours over here had been looking for a bike for a while looking for one of these I, I've got this one but it's an out of state bike so he couldn't buy this in California and uh, so he's looked at three or four so far. One of them ended up being a stunt bike. Uh, another one ended up having some crash history with it. And he's out looking at another one today. I hope he finds it. I hope it, it looks, I took a look at the bike online. It looked like it was a good quality bike. So we're hoping he gets that. Anyways, I would recommend this for a beginner rider that's mature enough a uh, somebody looking for another bike just to play with because this is a very very playful bike and you know you cannot ignore the fact that it is one heck of a stunters bike so somebody getting into doing stunts can really learn how to do stunts on this bike pretty easily it's really well balanced bikes one of the best balanced bikes and you know, we're not out doing wheelies or, or anything like that today. Just uh, a nice mellow ride. But uh, I'll tell you, this thing can wheelie like there's no other bike out there. Anyways, uh, that, my friends, is the Yamaha FZ07. I think it's a 2015, but the 2015, 16, 17s, 18s, all basically identical bikes. You can look for a bike that has ABS. And it'll have a little ring right here that has a little ABS dial on it. And that's a good way to, to realize that if you're just looking at pictures, whether it's got the ABS or not. A lot of times people will tell you that's got ABS. You'll see here this is a non-ABS version. Both the front and rear brakes don't have a small little ring right here for the ABS module. Um, anyways, that is the FC07. Thank you very much.